Hey everyone, welcome to Pipes, Tobacco, and Whiskey. So, Nathan and I have been talking the last couple of days and we realized that it's been quite a long time since we've done a review on a whiskey. Very long time. So today, guys, we are going to give you our impressions on Wild Turkey's uh, Long Branch Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Uh, I was introduced to this bourbon back in March uh, of last year when your mom and I went on that Kentucky bourbon trip. That's right, that's right. And we stopped at the Wild Turkey Distillery. And, uh, of course, at every distillery, you sample a lot of the different yeah. things that when you take their tour. And, you know, after a while, I, I bet we went to almost a dozen different distilleries while we were there. And after a while, you start to kind of lose track of them, of, of what they taste like yep. and things like that. And uh, so I kind of got reintroduced to this back uh, in the fall uh, and then realized that this was, this was a bourbon that we needed to try because it's got some interesting things going on. So let me give you guys a little bit of a background on this one. Uh, it was released in April of 2018. It's, a, it's considered an eight-year-old uh, bourbon, although there is no indication on the bottle that as to right. what the age is. And I think that's because at some point, after it's been established as a, as a bourbon, you know, in the, in the bourbon world, mm -hmm. that they could back off of that eight-year mark and maybe go to a six-year oh. or even a four-year. I don't know. But that's just my thoughts. It is a small batch. 86 proof, which is about 43% alcohol. Um, this one, uh, it's got an interesting process. And before I talk about the process, um, Matthew McConaughey <laughs> yeah. is kind of behind this creation. Yeah. Uh, and as I was doing research on this one, it's not just the, the uh, Wild Turkey using the name Matthew McConaughey. He actually was was intimately involved in the production in of this the one. in the concept, in the production, in the final product, uh, the bottling, everything. Uh, he he had quite a bit to say about it. So, um, in 2020, this was a double gold winner from the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, and uh, it was also a gold winner, scoring a 90 points from the Beverage Tasting Institute. In 2019, um, back in 2016, when Matthew McConaughey was was uh, uh, named as the company's creative director, oh. is when this project started. Um, and uh, the name comes from the referencing of hand, which one extends to invite a friend into their family. So that's the long branch comes in fr from that. Oh. These friends are the longest branches in one's family tree. Uh, long branch is also the first wild turkey product to ever have the signature of someone other than master distillers Jimmy and Eddie Russell on there. So it's quite a big step for the company of wild turkey yeah. to take on Matthew McConaughey and... and actually bear his name on the bottle and, and all of that. Huh. So that's a really big deal. Um, the mash bill on this one, guys, is about 75% corn. It's 13% rye and about 12% malted barley. The process that they use, after they've aged the, the, um, the bourbon for eight years, okay, they go through a filtering process and they, re they filter it through do two different types of charcoal. First is the white oak, American white oak ash, okay. the, the charcoal, okay? So they filter it through there. So it's picking up some of these um, smoky kind of, of, uh, uh, of hints uh -huh. as it's being filtered through that charcoal. And then, which is what Matthew McConaughey kind of brought into the whole thing, it's second charcoal filtered through mesquite charcoal so you get kind of a unique flavoring and it's it's a pretty unique process that they use um to kind of get those flavors so let's go ahead and jump in and start talking about 
the different things. Let's let's talk about the color of the uh, of the uh, bourbon first. So man, this is a. I I would almost say this is more gold and amber colored than I would say a yellow or an oak cast covered. You know, some of the other ones that we've done, like the very old Barton, they were your typical bourbon colors, but I felt like there were more brown. There were more brown elements to it. This one seems a whole lot more like gold to me. Very jewelish color. It's kind of a rich gold in there. Yeah. Yeah. A nice rich gold, maybe uh, kind of like even a wheat color, you know. Um, they're, they're wild turkeys uh, 101, 101 yeah. is much darker than yes. this. Yes, yes. And uh, you'll see it in some other one, other bourbons like Jim Beam and other similar priced blends uh, that are produced out there. They're much darker. This one seems very light and it almost seems light to the point that it's going to be oh this isn't going to taste like bourbon we'll you know get to that what i'm really enjoying on this one is the viscosity of it because mm-hmm. when you see those legs starting to run yeah there's they're holding and there's a bunch of them and they're long yeah and i mean goodness i mean it's an in, really interesting how those legs form i mean it's all around the glass and it just yeah it just holds and it from the very top where you hold it, and then it just goes straight down. Yeah. And it it still holds. I mean, I think I'm still... Yeah, there's still some legs Looking on Looking at my this glass. at first, I think a person would look at the color of this and say, eh, this is going to be kind of a flat mm-hmm. flavored, you know, not necessarily a really rich and bold... Perhaps more of a floral flavor to it or anything, just from yeah. the color appearance on it. Yeah. Let's get into the nose. Yeah. By the way, if you don't know, the, when I went on the, the bourbon trail tours, they say by taking a sniff into your, into your shirt like this, it kind of cleans the, the nose a little bit so yep. that you're getting a, a little truer scent from the, uh, from the bourbons. Well, that sweetness of corn is there for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Slight caramel, too. Yeah, there's a, kind of a, 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 a thick vanilla behind all of that. Almost a... Yeah, it's caramel and, and like that vanilla f- scent there that you get. It's almost like toffee. Yeah. Yeah. I get I get kind of a toasted grain. Yeah, from the malted barley probably. Almost like pancakes. Yeah? Yeah. You know, it's not pungent. It doesn't no, punch you in the not. face. It's pretty no. delicate. It's you can stick your nose all the way into this, all the yeah. way into the the glass, and you can smell it, and, and it, it not hit you right in your forehead or anything. On the back side of it, I get that kind of that leather tannin kind of scent, and yeah. I also get a little bit of of a just a mild smokiness. Yeah, a little bit of spice, a little bit of spice in there. You're not supposed to taste it yet. We're still on the nose. <laughs> you don't get in a hurry. You youngsters. Yeah. You're all the same. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I get a little bit of the oak in there, too, from, from the barrels. Nice. Yes, very nice. It's, it's just very soft, very mellow, uh, doesn't burn at all on the nose. No, it's very nice. It's, it's, it's really, I, I like that smell. Yeah. How it, it just doesn't hit you. It doesn't hit you as abrasively as some of the others. Well, let's go into the, into the palate. Yeah. Now, I have not added any water to this. I haven't either. I have been drinking a lot of cask strength. Uh, bourbons, mm-hmm. and not adding water to those either, and so I, I didn't add water to this on purpose to to see what I'm getting straight from the bottle. So here's the other thing that gets me when we when you kind of swish it around just to get the numbness, just to get the feeling or anything you get. There is no tingling I get from this bourbon. No. 
spice that I'm getting on the on the tip of my tongue or on the uh, rims of my gums and my teeth or anything like that. It's just a slight flavor, just a very very slight, very smooth flavor. Well, I get a little and bit I get, of a... I get the feeling there. Yeah, but it's like a heat. It's not. It's not. A, a, a stinging. That's what I was going to say. Feel. I get a little bit of a of a warmth. There. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, but and it, and some would maybe categorize that as a burn, but it's not. This nearly, is not a burn. It's not nearly <laughs> like, especially if you've been drinking all those cast drinks. Yes, and that's this is this is a, just a little warmth going on. Yeah, super creamy mouth. Feel. Very very creamy. Very smooth. Yeah. It's it's really nice on the mouth. Feel. And 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 there's. Probably, uh, I'm, let me take another sip. But I'm, th- I'm thinking that there's, there's, it doesn't burn at all going down. No, it uh, really there's no. Go, go for it. Yeah, I mean, it just goes down so easy. Yeah, really easy. The the the, the palate is not super complex. Mm mm. But. Right now, I'm just letting it sit in my mouth rather than taking a sip and going, you know. And so, uh, I'd like to kind of get into it a little bit more and see, yeah. see some more flavors come out of it. Actually do a full taste instead of letting it sit. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so... Uh. I'm getting some of that, a little bit of that spice. I'm getting some of the vanilla for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of pepper heat there. Ooh, very small. Yeah, amount. just a little. The smoke, for the process that they're doing, the smokiness is not, it's not like a peaty scotch. No, no. It is, it is so subtle and so uh, uh, hidden underneath some of those layers of flavors yeah that's the thing they're letting the flavors of the bourbon come through first then the smoke of the actual process you know yeah and that's that's one thing i like that you brought up the peaty scotches that you get those ones from you know from the isla isla and and my goodness that smoke on it just accentuates anything you're doing yeah see this is not yeah when i heard about compliments flavors when i heard about the process that they were using on this i was thinking when i first tried it, i was thinking okay is it going to be a a, a smoke bomb like a lafroig yeah or a lagavulin or some of those that you know, anything from the isla yeah yeah any of those but you know this one is like i said that smoke is very hidden underneath a lot of layers I get caramel apple kind of Very, taste. very much, yeah. You know, I, I'm getting, like I said, some of that spice and vanilla. Um, a little bit of honey and a little bit of, a little bit of that sweetness. Yeah, you get a touch of that char, you know, that, that kind of, uh, the, the char from the oak barrels, but also the charcoal, that, that minerally yeah. kind of yeah. that taste from that. Yeah. Yep. Um, the but it's balanced. It's really balanced. Get some toasted oak uh, in there. Do you get any fruit like other uh, like a stone fruit like a peach? No, or a plum or I, I really haven't gotten any of that. Now it quite possibly could be because I am smoking a cigar with this. Instead. What are you smoking? Uh, this is actually a house blend uh, cigar uh, made at a uh, tobacco shop uh, out of Cedar Hill. Uh, one that we went to earlier. Yeah. Uh, and it's just one of their house blend cigars that they rolled up there. How does it pair with that? Surprisingly well. Surprisingly well. The, the, I bought one of the lighter end of the cigars, one of the more flavorful, sweet flavored cigars that they have there. And getting that caramel apple taste and it's kind of the, the honey and vanilla sweetness from this bourbon that's shining through more than the smoky oakness. Yeah. Man, it complements because... Everybody knows that when you smoke a cigar, it smells completely different than it tastes, in my opinion. Uh, and just that rich smokiness from the sweet cigar, and then the really forward sweetness from the bourbon, yeah, just matching so well. I kind of went a little different route. I, I, I 
picked a kind of a smoky flavored uh, tobacco, mm -hmm. hoping that it would blend well with the smokiness of this. Yeah. Um, and actually, it's pairing pretty well. I, I'm smoking Captain Earl's Night Watch. Yeah, yeah. And um, so they pair well, but because this didn't have as much of the smokiness in it, it it's kind of doing something different than I expected. Yep. yep. You know, yep. it's still good. It, it, it is, it's never a bad combination to have a smoke and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah that's that was one route that i was thinking about was i was like you know do i want to accent some smokiness do i want to combat some smokiness to this or do i want to accentuate the sweetness of both yeah and that that was kind of my route with choosing mm. what i smoked with this i i get a little bit of a of a this on this at the very end i get a little sweetness of like an orange yeah a little yeah a little bit of orange like orange zest that, that's interesting on this too. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Okay, well, let's talk about the finish. Well, I gotta finish it. Well, no, don't. <laughs> don't do it. Just the finish <laughs> as, as you finish a drink. The first thing that hits me on the finish is that there is some heat, you know, as, as it's going down, but then it changes. To a, a dryness, very much, yeah. And that heat isn't to me down here. It's right, it's right up, here. Mine, yeah, mine is right up in here, right here. And you, f and then it just kind of mellows out, smooths out. And if you were feeling it in your gums and your teeth and on the tip of your tongue, that warmth, that's what it finishes out to. There's yeah. just a little bit of bite, a little bit of heat, and then it mellows out to just a decent warmness. And to me, the finish is where you really get the uh, the effect of the smoke. Yes. The the finish that's where where you're getting it is yep. in the finish. Yep. It's it's and it's really it's balanced all the that's way. That's where I'm getting the toasted oak barrel. You know, through the taste through the 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 nose of the drink and everything you know i don't smell it as prevalent as i smell some of those other flavors and i don't taste it but right when it finishes that's when i get the smoke yeah. that's when i'm getting that smoke i like this finish yeah i like the finish on this really well you know um this has been a a, a really nice surprise i'm not a big wild turkey fan me neither me uh, neither the, I, there's one that I drink from Wild Turkey that I like, and it's a it's a, a barrel strength. Uh, it's called Rare, Rare Rare. Let me see what it says over there. Over here somewhere. Rare, rare breed. breed. Yeah, rare breed. Rare breed. And um, it's it's quite good. It's yeah. quite good. But that's like straight from the cask, you know. So um, you're getting a lot of different uh, things that that normally get cut when you when you put you know yep. add water to it and yep. things like that so um but this is is a pretty nice surprise it's a pretty good bourbon um this bottle right here 750 milliliters uh a fifth and it's about 35 to 40 bucks depending on where you get it no that's not bad yeah i mean it's right there in the middle a little of the, of the price range for bourbons I yeah think. yeah i think so too especially for ones that are as quality as this one is yeah and I think this is probably, you know, because like a lot of people, they get the wild turkey. They get that 101. You know, they want a punch in the face with that strength of, of, uh, of uh, alcohol. Yeah, I knew it. And uh, this is different. Yes. This is, this is more elevated yeah. than some of their other offerings. And they offer such a wide range of things that it almost makes it hard for me to want to get in. But to know... And that's the thing that I, I appreciate about the branding on this particular bottle and the style that they use. It's a way to lure the people in who had terrible college moments with wild turkey <laughs> to sell them wild turkey without them knowing they're drinking wild turkey. And that's, I think it's very clever because I knew a guy that used to just guzzle wild turkey 101 and 151. And Gosh, so many bad things happened yeah. during that time. And it almost made me adversive to Wild Turkey. But trying this, 
and then you telling me that it's a wild turkey blend? Yeah. Never would have guessed it. Well, uh, you know, what I think about, like about this one is is that I think it says something to all types of bourbon drinkers. You've got this new age yeah. crowd of bourbon drinkers that are coming in, and, and, and uh, this would speak to them because of, uh, of its kind of like a craft mm -hmm. bourbon, you know. Uh, and for the old timers... Um, you know, it's it, it's just right there. It's in yeah. the wheelhouse. You yeah. know, right there in the same bucket that they've been drinking. Yeah, from. yeah. I mean, it, it's really interesting. Uh, of course, neat. Like we're drinking it right now, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, I I have not mixed this with anything else. I would almost not want to. Well, I'm that way, but a lot of people do like to, you know, make Manhattans or whatever, yeah. you know. Oh, well, yeah, like martini style ones I, because and there's not much crossed with it. I think that would be a great bourbon to, to do that with. Um, this is not, hey, if you're a wild turkey person, this is not going to be like any other wild turkey product that you've ever tried. This no. is going to be uh, on the other side. Yep. Um, so don't you know? Don't expect that same thing. This the, is the way this, I'm comparing it is kind of it's the the Lincoln Cadillac of wild turkey. This is more sweet and yes. oaky uh, compared to the others. Mm -hmm. um, the others are those Ford Mustangs. They and <laughs> I I also read where this bourbon was an attempt to try to compete with those, for lack of a better term, those preppy or yuppie bourbons like Woodford Reserve, yep. Basil Hayden. So, yeah, some of those that uh, have reached that mainstream, mm -hmm. you know. And I think this is an attempt to try to get, and a good attempt. Very good attempt. Um, this is a, this is quite a, a good little find from Wild Turkey. Uh, yeah. And I just, like I said, the first time you had me try it, I would not have believed this was a wild turkey product unless you told me it was. It is not typical of wild turkey. No, it is sure. not. Well, looks like the turkey bought a suit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in the tux, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not. This is not going to blow you away, but it's really nice. For the you know, typically rings. we don't give ratings on our bourbons. Yeah. Usually, since I was a, I'm, I'm a retired uh, band director, school teacher. Yeah. Um, I'd give it a grade. You know? Well, let's do that. My grade for this, uh, based on on uniqueness, uh, and then of course drinkability, um, availability, price. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give this a B plus. Pretty high rating. Yeah. Pretty high rating. Yeah. Whereas we're basically saying a C is average. Anything below yes. that is probably. Yeah, no, not, not worth it. Not worth it. Yeah. Uh, if that's the grade scale that we're using, I would say absolutely. I agree with you. B plus for me as well. This is, I've tried better ones. Uh, and uh, I've also paid more for worse ones. And that's, that's pretty much where I feel at. This is a very strong grade for it. Uh, I would really like to see that this this particular line, see how much it would be aged at 12 years, 15 years. You know, some of those other mile markers that some of those bourbons go up to and see what it would taste like as a really, really mature. You know, but... I would like to taste it when it's legal to vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, you know, once you take it out of the out of the cask it doesn't age anymore oh yeah yeah but so that's what i'm saying Make you want to cask. sit in the, in the in the rick house is a little longer and yeah, yeah. well of course it'd jack up the price but that's at the right. same time that's right that would be something i'm willing to try because this has led me on to a point where i'm like you know what i want to keep a bottle of this in my liquor cabinet i want to keep one of these in my rotation and if they ever do make a 12 or a 15 year one i want to try that one yeah i'm gonna buy it all right. Well, uh, any other final thoughts about this one? I think you should go out and try I it. I think you guys, try it. Try it. I know the fact that we've said it's a wild turkey blend might turn some of you off. Don't let it. This is a good, good blend. And uh, as you can see, we're probably going to be finishing up here in a minute. Yeah. <laughs>
We might pour ourselves another one. <laughs> Just because it is very tasty. Yeah, so please try it. Really, really tasty. I don't know if you've noticed, guys, but we're kind of in a different room. Um, this is going to be my uh, smoking lounge. Yeah. Uh, and we've got it set up. It's it's not quite finished, but we've got it set up where all my tobaccos, my cellaring tobaccos are back here. My high dollar pipes and everything like that. We've got decoration. Uh, got a ventilation ventilation system going on right now. So mm -hmm. hopefully very soon the, the next... Uh, couple of reviews will be fully integrated yeah, into we'll the room. be in here and we'll have everything set up to, to go uh, don't forget guys uh, let's ash it out we want some ideas we were at a pipe club meeting this last uh, uh, couple of days and we got lots of good ideas from those guys mm -hmm. uh, as to topics that we should address but we'd also like to hear from you so leave uh, your comments down underneath the video let us know what you think. Uh, we're looking for topics that are uh, taboo, uh, controversial. Something that starts an argument with your own local pipe club. Yeah, or you know something you feel very strongly about that other people may may not agree with. You know, so or just something you'd like for us to cover a little bit more in depth that you haven't seen anybody do in the pipe community or the drinking community or smoking community period and that's something that we're wanting to do with let's ash it out is as you can see i'm smoking a cigar instead of a pipe we're wanting to branch out a little bit we're wanting to hit those top topics because let's admit we're all smokers so let us know what you think all right well thanks for coming in this evening and no problem and uh getting to test out the lounge test out the lounge and see if this uh this ventilation system really does what it's supposed to do it's better so, because it yeah was, we're going to be in here for a bit. It, it was well, and it was not cheap. <laughs> it was it was uh, kind of expensive. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you, and don't forget make all your piping moments count. Take care and have a great week. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>